welcome to the Knitting Samurai and Her Guys video podcast. This is episode 149, and I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai. Hey! <laughs> if you're new to the show, thanks so much for joining me. Happy New Year! Welcome to 2016. Can you believe it is here? It is time for another new year. It's January. I am just blown away. I'm also highly into... Um, the house renovation stuff, so we'll save that, talk about it at the end, and if, as I was starting to say, if you're new, welcome, I'm me, <laughs> I live in New Hampshire, I have a husband and two boys, a one-year-old, 18-month-old, he's 18 months, he's not one, 18 months old, and a four-year-old, and they keep me very busy, very busy, and I was so happy that today is Monday and they went back to school. <laughs> but I think Tristan was too, because this morning, that's my 18 month old, I was listing up teachers and friends and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he ran <laughs> towards the downstairs. So I think he's ready to go back. Ro, not so much. He loves just being together and lazy with the family. And um, we've been watching a bit of HGTV while we have some downtime between things in our own house renovation that's going on right now. and. At one point he got up off the couch last night, walked into the dining room. He's like, okay, I'm gonna take down your yucky gross steps and your yucky gross door and I'm gonna put in a new door and then take away the steps and there'll be no steps. How's that sound? He was just so cute. He was just determined and it's funny to see him imitating what he's seeing in life. So um, yeah, let's talk about knitting. So I have some new projects. Everything's in a blue bag. I don't think you can see the bags. At least I hope you can't, because if you can see the bags, you can see my pajama pants. <laughs> um, <coughs> so first, just thinking, what would you have seen before? So I went with my parents this weekend. Steve watched the boys, because he's not really into it. And uh, dad and I were both like, we have to see it on the big screen. And went to see the Star Wars movie. Very cute, very entertaining um borderline could have brought row i don't think it would have been too scary for him so if you have like a six-year-old definitely don't hesitate bringing them in my mind um but while i was there i did some knitting yep so this i have watched podcasts for a very long time and i've seen a lot of people using progress keepers and i've always been like ah whatever i'll just eyeball about where i was but it is so encouraging to move it after you record and then say look i knit this much sitting in a movie theater and playing the horrible people game what is that called cards against humanity <laughs> we played the horrible people game with um with some of our friends and so i was working on this while i was doing that you know lately in this is our let me tell you the details about this sock it is I don't have notes. Online super sock, neon colors, US zeros, two millimeter needles, two by two rib, toe up, slip stitch heel pattern by Wendy Johnson. That's my favorite heel flat pattern or heel toe up heel pattern. Um, although the fish lips kiss is threatening to overtake it. But uh, links on my project page to the patterns I'm referencing. So that's in here. Getting some progress. I have started, I'm like two rows into gusset increases. Um, but I found that lately in the evenings, rather than being able to just knit something simple, stock in a garter rib um, late into the night, I'm just too tired. So I like, we played Cards Against Humanity and for like the last half an hour, I just laid on my stomach and I was on the couch. <laughs> I laid on my stomach and played the game instead of multitasking, which is what I normally would do, would be knitting and playing. So I did that. Um, I also worked on the yoga socks, which is a patterns pattern. Links in show notes. I don't, I don't even have the pattern. It fell out of my project bag somewhere. Maybe I left it at the movie theater. That'd be kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> which is fine. I'm, I was just following their uh, suggestions on lengths of things. So this is Opal Little Prince yarn in color, because I do have the skein, 7764. It's a really pretty blue-purple color. On the label, <clears throat> the stripes look smaller than they're knitting up. 
to me, to my eye. This is different for me. So normally I knit a two by two rib and for some reason I just blindly followed the pattern. So it has a little bit, it's a free pattern. Um, it has a little bit of one by one rib at the very beginning and then you go into a stockinette stitch. So straight knitting for the foot of the sock. Um, I'm not sure if you even knit a heel or if you just leave, like finish that edge. <laughs> finish that portion around where the heel comes through because they are um, yoga socks. Well, she's gonna wear them with her sandals. So that's the real reason we're knitting. I'm knitting them. So toe up. So her toes are gonna peek out here. I posted a picture on Instagram of my toesies wearing these socksies because we do have the same size foot. So that's going on. I think the foot for her needs to be like six and a half inches before I start whatever I'm doing for the heel. So there's that in a pinot loop bag. Um, I am just flying right through this. So then there were the more interesting projects on my needles right now that I've seen some love. And this is the view from the Charles. I'll give you a peek. That's what it looks like. And that's by Jennifer Lassonde, Boston Jen, Down Cellar Studios podcast. You should definitely check her out, listen to that podcast. I am, I know I've knit on it since we last spoke, but I don't think I've done all that much. I think I did maybe 10 rows, which they're getting to be um, of substantial length now. So it's not like you can do 30 rows in a sitting. So there's that. I'm, I'm very much enjoying it. I'm anxious. So this is going to be the finished edge. And then the other edge goes up this way that you knit some other direction. Um, I'm anxious to see how it turns out. So I did modify it to include more frequent increases following her stitch count, but hopefully that'll make it a little shorter. So this is knit on US size sixes, which I believe are four millimeter needles. And I am using Into the World Gloucester, Gloucester <laughs> sock yarn, which is a 80-20 super wash merino nylon. It's great, it's great. And that's going to be my contrast, which is a fiber knit dye works. So those are going on in my official January knitting bag. Fru, I need to get some blue balls. I have to go look in my stash. I watched Silly Fru Sassy Pants Knitter today and I was also a 12 year old boy laughing my butt off at her year long knit along. Um, I think it was mid-December when she recorded the podcast episode. I'm sorry, I don't know the number. But if you want a really good laugh and um, motivation to do a year-long knit-along with her, you should totally go check her out. That's Sassy Pants Knits. SPK, I think is her abbreviation. She's available on iTunes and YouTube, and she is so funny. So I have to find some blue yarn for January. I need to get in on this. Um, and at the very least, get some red yarn. So not get, find some skeined up yarn in my stash. So, but she definitely made me laugh with that. So, the mittens I've been talking about for it seems like ages are finally in the works and they are as lovely as I want them to be. And they are part of the color work knit along that's going another week, 10 days till January 15th. Um, so if you want to do some color work, you can totally bang these out. I cast them on Thinking, when did I cast these on? I don't even think it's been a week. I think I did it New Year's Eve or the day before New Year's Eve because I worked on the cuff in the movie theater. But anyways, so these are the Wonder Wonder Mittens by Miss Megan Williams of Stockin' at Zombie fame. I'm using US 3s and 5s to knit them. I'm using what I know Knit Pick Swish is a worsted weight yarn. And what I thought, Mission Falls 136 Merino Superwash was a worsted yarn, but now realizes a sport weight yarn <laughs> for my contrast color. But those are the two colors. <clears throat> I have the second cuff this far along. And because we are, um, <laughs> I'm using the other end of my sock blocker just to show you what I think is an absolutely stunning mitten. <laughs> so it is this, um, what do they call it? Tide pool heather. 
is the teal color and then this rose red color. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. Megan and I don't necessarily think the same way. It's some of her um, instructions confused me a little bit. I definitely had to stop and think critically, okay, what is she telling me to do right now? But it, it was clear. It's just like my brain wasn't interpreting the pattern right while I was watching TV and knitting and texting and looking at Instagram. It was like, okay, got to stop everything and be quiet for a minute and think about what's next. So um, I knit whatever is the largest size because I do have rather large hands and they fit me perfect. The thumb is nice. All my ends are woven in on this first one. And if I could walk around wearing just one mitten, I would. Um, I don't see any problem having you sport weight yarn. I really don't. It seems fine to me. And it's already got a little bit of a halo to it. So I'm a, a bit worried that these are going to be um, pilly mitts, but I'll at least wear them this winter and love them. I have a navy blue jacket and um, an almost black. It's so dark blue. It's almost black jacket. So it goes great with either one of those. Um, I'm thinking I might do some teacher knitting right now and make a pair of these for Tristan's teacher. Yeah. For next year. <laughs> also doubles as a soccer bit. <laughs> no, I've not been drinking. I'm just slightly silly and giddy. So that's what's happening in my knitting right now. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about the house? Okay. So Mike, our contractor construction guy started on the 26th. I want to say he was there the day after Christmas. Yeah. Whatever that Friday. Yeah. I don't know. My dates are messed up, but it hasn't even been 10 days since Mike's been in there and a wall's down. The T wall's gone. Um, today he pulled out the door, double door out to the patio and we're making it a single door, glass door, floor ceiling glass, um, so that the kitchen can expand into the dining room a little bit more, more room for the cupboards and whatnot. Um, out my pantry he's which is um, in the hallway next to the kitchen just so I have a little cupboard to put it's just a one by one like I can stand in it but I won't be able to and we're gonna have shelves top to bottom in it except on the very bottom I think I'm gonna put a vacuum in there um, so we boxed that out Steve was working all weekend and he trimmed out all the dead hedge, not dead, but overgrown hedges on the front of the house. Those are gone. Um, he ripped up carpeting in three bedrooms, a hallway, and the stairs to upstairs. Those were all carpeted. So we ripped that out. Today he was over there um, getting up the, the staples and tacks and nails that were holding the rug down. has happened over there. Mike framed out the family room that we're putting in the basement so that it's unfinished right now. So we're finishing it. The cupboards have been ordered. I was going to do that last time. Um, what else? We haven't picked out our granite. We made the payment on it. We haven't picked out that what color it's going to be and we haven't picked out the color of the wood floors because those are decisions that are a bit overwhelming to me and um, just having a really hard time because I like the hardwood stain to almost black espresso color, like really dark wood floors. Um, but I also recognize that that is what's trendy right now and may not necessarily be, um, uh, the best later on. So who knows? We'll probably end up with like a medium brown floor on the whole wood floor on the whole, um, first floor, which is what we were replacing. So there's that. What else? That's it. 
we picked out appliances. I know what I'm getting. I haven't ordered them yet, but we're ready to pull the trigger whenever. Yeah, I think that's it. Ro went on a tour of the house with Steve. They were over there doing the shrubs together and Ro was playing in the yard. He spent like two hours running around outside. He's so happy. He loved it. Um, he, Steve showed him his, the boy's bedroom, which I wouldn't have done, but took him on a tour of the house and he wanted to see it. And right now that bedroom is red walls with whatever those are called, those diagonal. It's a cake. So, and it goes way up into the roof line. So the boys' bedroom walls are like this. And the straight part is painted red. And the angled part Ooh. is painted black. I don't know what we're gonna find in this room. This is gonna be the boys' room. Hopefully there aren't any little friends hanging out in here right now. Okay, looks clear. <laughs> there was a mouse the first time we came here, so I'm a little freaked out. So this is double door closet. Goes back. That's all been opened up back there. That will be closed in. Yuck. The trim on the window needs to be fixed. But their room overlooks the driveway. There's everybody's cars. And then the other end is what will be the our room. Is white. And so Ro thinks that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and the light switch in that room has a dinosaur on it. It's like a porcelain painted dinosaur. Okay, everything in that house is so disgusting. It's all getting ripped out and replaced. But of course, Ro decides he thinks that that light switch is the coolest thing. So um, I need to find a porcelain dinosaur light switch to replace that one with so that he can think that one's cool. Hopefully, hopefully he won't notice. <laughs> and um, I think their room is going to be, I'm calling it Irish Mist because that's what it was when we painted their room here. It's basically like white that's gray with a drop of gray in it just because um, the way I change out their bedding sets and their the decorations, I like to put the decals on their walls and keep it colorful with whatever they're into. So right now their bedroom has alphabet, animal alphabet decals across the top. And then we have some planes, like big planes decals from the movie planes on the closet doors. And there's some Paw Patrol in there. This is on Roland's side. And then on Tristan's side of the room, they have, he has jungle. So jungle, uh, we're beyond jungle. Um, for the new house, I think we're going to have some Jake, Neverland Pirates, maybe some Octonauts and Paw Patrol on the walls. Just, I, I like it. I like it having color that way. And, um, I definitely had to have pristine walls growing up. Like I had, um, pink on the bottom of the wall and then the top was lighter pink. And then I had a unicorn border and there were no posters and no nail holes. And like my room was nice. Right. And then I got to high school and I painted my room teal and we put a top border that was like cityscapes along the top of the room. And again, no posters. I could have posters in the family room in the basement, but not on my room upstairs. So I think this is kind of like me rebelling or give, living through them, giving them the chance to have decals all over their walls, wherever they want them as far because those decals don't hurt anything. So, uh, that's where that's at. Yeah. Did I tell you that the kitchen cabinets are white and they have these really long skinny silver knobs? I think they're beautiful. They, um, they look like a post, but they'll be vertical. They're bars. And it's the same for the drawers and the cabinets. So it's pretty exciting what's going on over there. I keep going over and taking pictures and videos. I went over this morning with mom and, and uh, we were teasing Mike because the door was gone and it was 8, 10 in the morning. And it's like, Mike, when did you get over here? Oh, I came in about 7. Whatever. He does what he wants. But um, we're teasing him that, you know, you, you're going to put a door in there, right? <laughs> So it's been great fun to see the progress. And we are, like I said, eight days into this because it's the fourth. And I can't do math. It's more than a week. But then he didn't work all weekend, but Steve did in his place. So, yeah, that's it. That's what's going on with me. <laughs> I had some free time and I wanted to sit down. And I felt like I had a lot of knitting progress. Now that I go through it all, I don't feel like it's a lot, but... 
I really love these mittens and you should go get them. So, all right, I'll see you in about 10 days or so. Take care until then. Bye.